is my Bible. It is God revealing himself to me. In it, he shows me. He's the faithful covenant-keeping God. Through my trust in his word, he includes me in his covenant. Therefore, I am who the covenant says I am. And I do what the covenant says to do. And I receive. Everything the covenant says is mine. I am a believer, not a doubter. I have eyes to see and ears to hear what the Spirit of God is delivering to the people of God. And I am not only a hearer, I'm a doer too. And God performs his word. In my life, life. just like he promised. promised. Amen. Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. We are continuing uh, the word for this year, uh, 2022. Write that, uh, you know, in front of your uh, title. That that should be the 2022, like we do every year, 2022. And what's that title? Accelerated Development and Preparation for Glory. Might not be the sexiest, but trust me. Uh, That's the best thing you've heard yet. Um, 22 is an indication of a time, a period, a concentration of chaos, disruption, disorder, glory to God, which is not good news to anybody but God's people. Because God, historically, God always and God has promised to us, uh, he's got a plan. And for this year, though, he's saying that through that disruption, see, I'm, I'm going to, he said, I'm going to train you. This is your opportunity to walk by faith and not by your senses. This is an opportunity to walk in the spirit. Same thing as faith. Because if you don't have senses, you got to be senses of your physical, in your body. So if you walk by faith, not by the senses, you got to be in the spirit. Amen. And not the flesh, the body. Saying the same thing. Amen. Glory to God. Because faith is the victory that overcomes the world. And God's not playing. He's winning. And he's won for you. Amen. So with him foretelling us, and I think that's why we started this last week in the second month of this year. I mean, he told us this going into the year. Uh, but he didn't have me bring out, you know, on, on the Sunday, on, on the major day when anybody hears it till now. Because you saw how fast January went by, and if you pay attention, if you know, it's because things broke loose and went wild for you. Amen. Disrupted. And if not in your relationships, amen. Things going on with family members and in your house. Come on, God is not a lie. <laughs> Glory to God. It's a clear indicator. You you can see in in the things going on around you. Uh, Financial markets are rum. They don't know what they go. You know, it's all around you. And God has said through it all to you that he's going to take advantage of this time in order to, what, accelerate, developing you, perfecting you in preparation for glory. His glory that he shares with you, which is exceeding abundantly above everything you could imagine or you ask. You got to add up everything you can imagine, everything you could ask God for. He's going light years beyond that with you. Glory to God. And now is the time. And I'm seeing he's doing, he's, man, he's, he's just, he, he's just, thank you, Lord, for being God. Amen. So we started this last week, and uh, I'm going to say it again. He says he's going to take this time, the opportunity, because, see, things never stay the same, and the disorder, people think of it negatively. People think of chaos negatively. First thing God showed you, the first thing God showed you in Genesis, out of chaos, he brings Eden. 
pleasure. Perfect beauty and pleasure. It's the first thing he showed you. He ain't scared. Out of what? Chaos. Okay, I got I to stay focused. So let me, let, me, let me say it again. He's accelerating your development, him perfecting you in preparation for glory. Glory to God. So we got to be ready to go. So we started last week, and uh, yeah, let, let's turn there. Uh, Psalm 37. Psalm 37. We started last week, and, and first thing God said is he has us on course for his glory. He has us on course for his glory. Hallelujah. Uh, and Psalm 37, a little shortcut, tells us how to come into this. Now, it's two-part. I don't want to get bogged down again. Very clear last week. But in verse 4, it says clearly to what? Delight yourself in the Lord. He can't do that for you. No one else can do that for you. But if one delights themselves in the Lord, focuses attention, focuses their affection, their desires on who? the Lord, what's going to happen? God, come, no, read it. Don't, don't, don't say it. Read it. God's going to give them the desires of their heart. You're not going to attain them. God's going to give you the desires of your heart. So how do you get the desires of your heart? It's not a mystery. It's not a secret. How do you get the desires of your heart? So if you don't have the desires of your heart, because you're not delighting yourself in the Lord. So change that. I need to square that because every individual is consumed and distracted by the desires of their heart. And they're basic. No, you ask, you ask somebody, well, basic. Man. They're, they're basic. God's not against them. He's, he gave them, he, he, he given them to you. But they're basic. He's trying to do something with you. A little side note. The, 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 well, the, why does he give us the desires of our heart then? To give you clues to the directions for the course he has you on. For the course he has you on, not us on, for his glory. We're all going to glory, but you got a course that he's got you on, and you need directions for it. So do I. The courses aren't the same, but we're going the same place. <clears throat> so he gives us desires to give us indications of our gifts and talents and affections, but they're basic. It's just preschool. So that's why I said it like that. You don't have the desires of your heart. It's your fault. You ain't just delight yourself in the Lord. <laughs> One causes the other. It's not a mystery. It's not a test. Just delight yourself in the Lord. I dare you. You're preoccupied and consumed with desires of your heart, but you're spinning your wheels, living meaninglessly. Meaninglessly, just spinning your wheels. Well, those are my desires. Those are my, what are you doing about it? How can you get there? You don't even know how to get there. Delight yourself in the Lord. Yes. Boom. Yes. He delivers them to you. So put that, that's done. Verse 5 is altogether different. In fact, in, in the printing of my Bible, there's a big space between 4 and 5. No, my Bible is, uh, it's, uh, what does that mean? Different thought, change, turn the page. That's how they printed it. Their groupings in four and five are split. And I, I, I gave you this split last week. Be clear on it. You, you should a long time ago square away the desires of your heart. And you should be wondering, well, what's next? See, that's how I came to the Lord. Yeah, okay, I can't have time for that. Okay, uh, verse 5 talks about something entirely different. He says, commit your way to the Lord. That's not delighting in him. That's different. That's a whole different level. That's a higher level. Commit your way, your course, what you're doing, your life, where you're going to end up committed to him. 
You don't have to, and no one can do it for you, but he's telling you, commit your way to the Lord. Trust also in him. That's faith. You're going to have to also do what he says. Follow his direction. Now, not delayed. Delayed obedience is not. Amen. Commit your way to the Lord. That, that's your, light, your, your, your future, what, what, you know, where you're going, your course. That's different than trusting also in him. See, it's and, and trust in him. That's yourself. That's your actions and thoughts. Trust yourself. Faith also in him, and he shall bring the it is italicized, so it was inserted by the translators. Thank you for letting us see that. So ignore it. And it says, and he shall bring to pass. What are he going to bring to pass? Eye has not seen, ear has not heard, neither has entered the heart of, heart's desires got to be cleared up, neither has entered the heart of a person, what? The things that God has prepared for those who love him. But he has revealed them to us by his spirit. Revealed what to us by his spirit? Those things that he's prepared for those. The plans he made and fulfilled. He planned, he fulfilled. If you're here, it's proof the plans are already done and fulfilled because God knows the end and begins. You didn't get that. So you being here is proof, victory. Doesn't mean you're going to get there, but you can because it's guaranteed. So you ought to stop trusting yourself or anybody else. Commit your way to him. Trust also in him, and he shall bring to pass. Bring what to pass? No one can, if it's exceeding abundantly above all you can ask or think, ain't no use trying to talk about it. Short answer, glory. You have to experience it. It, 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 you can't, yeah, you can't put a definition on it. Amen. Amen. Glory to God. Um, but we also established last week, so that's number one, God has us on course for his glory. Number two last week was without correction, there's no direction. Without correction, there's no direction, and we're lost. That's what you see in society today. Well, it's, it's, it's just, 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 just lost. Okay, go to Hebrews chapter 12. Come on. Be excited. Thank God you made, he got you here today. Yes, Hebrews 12, 5. Hallelujah. Let's just square this away. Yeah, see, society runs away from this right here because if, if you don't agree, you don't say what I say, you don't do what I tell you to do, you don't like what I like, you're canceled. That's beyond immature. That is self-glorification. The epitome of pride and arrogance. Correction cannot be separated, extracted from love. True love. So that's why everybody is committing suicide, trying to kill others, and upset out there because they've separated themselves from love because they can't hear this. Stand to hear, even hear, correction. Look at Hebrews 12, verse 5. And you have forgotten. See, society has forgotten. The exhortation, the warning, the, the admonition of the Lord, which speaks to us as to children, not as slaves, not as enemies, not as associates, his own descendants, his own children. My child, despise not See, that's something you got to do. Do not despise the chastening of the Lord, nor faint. Don't quit. Nobody's right all the time. Nor faint when you are rebuked of him. Why? Because whom the Lord, what, loves. Not, not phileo, storge, or eros, but agape, which is exclusive to God. Nowhere on this planet unconditional <laughs> unconditional got to do you good to my own detriment that's what agape is oh yeah okay praise the lord for whom the lord loves he chastens and scourges which means flogs every child whom he receives because he got you busted he got you contaminated 
He picked you up off the heap. And he loved you too much to let you stay the foul self you were. He would not put up with me. He loved me. He didn't let me be who I was when he found me. He called us. We did not call him. Glory to God. It goes on. If you endure chasing, see, it's not guaranteed. But you can guarantee it if you commit your way, trust in him, and stop listening and going with and following others. You can guarantee it because he guaranteed it's there. The only question is if you quit. I said the only question weighing in the balance is if you quit. And if you don't quit, well, in due season, you shall reap. I mean, it's all over the Bible. I, I, come on. It's all up and down Scripture. Don't quit. Never give in. It's not over until we, they better be glad I ain't playing today. Where in the world do you think you're going? Drag your little butt back. I ain't won yet. It will be over. Not when the scoreboard reads no time. When it says, I won. No, you got teams out there, let the clock run, let the clock run. They'll lose. Watch right here. See, I just, I, I just, I just like to watch this. I, I have the word in me, so I see everything from the word. Amen. There was a Super Bowl a few years ago. Everybody was all excited because this one team had this other team nobody liked down. I mean, beat up, demoralized at halftime. What was it, 25 to 3, something like that. But it wasn't just the score. I mean, they were physically dominating this team from New England. <laughs> and everybody was excited. That's why you got this foul halftime. It's, it's, everything's artificial about this game. That halftime came, which is inflated three times. Halftime is you're in, you get something, and you're out. Let's get back at it. And that team, because they were looking at they you look, go back and look at it. They want the time to go away. You get the time to go away. How about you keep gutting them? All right. And they lost. This team right here. To get where they are was down 21 to 3 at halftime. To the great almighty, greatest show, biggest offense, spot them 21. <laughs> hey, looking at the time. Let it run out so we win. You ain't going to win looking at no time. You're a loser. I used to love it playing. They started, only four more minutes. Did you hear what they said? Four more. Oh, we got this, suckers. That, that means they're going to quit in four minutes. That means that's a quitter's mentality. I already beat you. <laughs> Look at the scoreboard. Yeah, you keep looking. Look at the time. <laughs> I wish. Praise the Lord. Because if I go beyond that time, you're trying to talk, tick tock down. Oh, you're dead. Okay, all right, praise the Lord. Uh, mm, mm, so the correction. I didn't finish reading. If you endure, <laughs> verse 7, if you endure chasing, see, that's, that's what you got to guarantee, the if. Say, yes, I endure. Yes, I endure. Amen. If you endure that chasing, that flogging by God, God deals with you as his children. For what child is he whom the father chastens not? We dealt with this last week. But if you be without chastisement, whereof we all are partakers, or the child, all the children, the true children are partakers, then you are bastards and not children. Furthermore, isn't that enough, Lord? No, furthermore, we have had fathers, let's get this, after our flesh, which corrected us, and we gave them reverence. Shall we not much rather be in subjection to the father of spirits and live? For they, talking about our natural fathers, earthly fathers, they truly, for a limited time, for a few days, chasing us after their own pleasure, did the best they could. But he, talking about God, for our profit. Then say his pleasure. says for our our, I like that word. You can hate on it. Profit. Why? So that we might be partakers of his holiness. Now, let's be clear and honest. No chastening 
for the present seems joyous. This sucks. But grievous, however, nevertheless, after. See, people don't get to the after. Why? Because they're quitters. You can't get to the after unless you endure. Amen. Now, no chasing for the present seems to be joyous, but grievous. And nevertheless, however, afterward it yields the peaceable fruit of righteousness to them which are exercised thereby. Glory to God. Now, um, God told me to pump the brakes and, and, and deal with us a little more. So he's got us on course. He called you. You didn't call him. He knows the way. You don't. You don't even know where you are unless he tell you. All honest. <laughs> Everything on the table. Amen. So let's, let's look at some things here. I just, I love the word of God. Go to Proverbs. Let's take a look at some things. We're talking about your destiny. What's your destiny? The glory of God. What's the glory of God? You living a life you never had dreamed or imagined. Now. Now. And eternally. Glory to God. That is exceeding abundantly above everything you could imagine and ask according to the power that's working in you. When you commit your way and trust also in him, he does it. God works it. Glory to God. What? That perfect plan. I'm discussing all the same thing. Amen. But we know nothing about it. Eye has not seen, ear has not heard. We got to come to terms like we're not who we think we are. We were contaminated. We've been lied to. He knows the course. We didn't, we didn't find the course. He put us on it. He brought us to it. Amen. So, so we, need, we need some help here. So uh, go to Proverbs. We're going to look at some Proverbs here. Book of Wisdom. Awesome. Just some, some, some key ones to your destiny, to your future, to you being successful. However you want to term it for yourself. You want to be successful in life? You better get this. Proverb number, did I tell you? Let's start at 19. Proverb 19. God's got us on a course. One of the problems is people think they got ideas. And they're fine, but they're not God's. Well, some are fine. Well, no, when you compare God, they're all trash. You give you the desires of your heart, but that's basic. No, 2022 20, basic. Basic. That ain't flattery. In comparison to what? What he got? What he shall bring to pass? Amen? Proverb 19, verse 21. I remember God. Some things that stick with you. You're new in Christ. Some things that stick with you. This stuck with me. Many are the devices in a man's person's heart. Man means person. Are, are you with me? Yes. Nevertheless, the secret, excuse me, the secret, not secret, the counsel of the Lord, that shall stand. Read it real quickly from the Amplified. Uh, many plans are in a man's or a person's mind, but it's the Lord's purpose for him that will stand. You can have all the plans you want to. Doesn't mean they're going to succeed. But God has a plan for you. And it does succeed. There's nothing that can alter it, including your plans. Yeah, that, that's, a, that's a scripture you want to sit down and think about, roll over a few hundred times. I really don't have a lot of time today. I, I, maybe I should pump my brakes even, even I mean, mm. you, no, because you just need to spend some time in the word. No, that's what I said. He just told you, I know you got a lot of plans. He didn't say you're a wicked thing. You just, I know, but you, you spend it. Why? 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 When I got <laughs> what's good, acceptable, and perfect for you and can alter, it stands. That, that means it endures. Amen. But that means the person doesn't know it because their heart, their mind's filled with all their plans. Come on. Go to 16. Number 16, 
sounds suspicious as like or related to Psalm 37. Verse 3 says, commit your works to the Lord. Commit what you're going to do. Lord, whatever I do, I'm doing it unto you. See, that's where you got to start. And your thoughts shall be, now you won't be confused. Depressed, frustrated, and all the rest. All that blown out the window. It's it, just when you obey God. Now, some people need a big dose of humility. Oh, I know. Yeah, and your life sucks. And we're tired of you because you think you know. And all you do is come around talking about you know, and you suck on your own life. If you know, you suck. I got good news for you. Arrogant one, humble yourself. You don't know, but God got you. And all you're messing up can't alter what he got for you. But sit your butt down. Why don't you worship him? I come in here week after week. I see, I, I, I don't see many of y'all just free. I, I ain't going to deal with it. I, I don't see many of y'all. And, and a lot of you are hiding behind masks. You're moving. Your, praise the Lord. You need a big dose of humility. You can't be exalted without humility. Commit your works to the Lord. You ain't going to be confused no more. Your thoughts, your thinking, they won't be useless. They won't be frustrating. See, people don't understand. Your thoughts are what tormenting you. They'll be what? Established. Stuff ain't even happening to you from the inside out. It's the thoughts, the strongholds of the devil in them. Run, run and have it. Okay, I got I to hurry up. Let's go to number three. These aren't chapters. Amen. Psalms, Proverbs, they ain't chapters. No, it's, go to number three. Proverbs. Verses 5 and 6. Glory to God. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. See, I had to humble myself. I had plans. But I was frustrated and depressed. And I had gotten the desires of my heart. Is this it? God said, glad you asked. No. <laughs> I got something to see abundantly above. Yeah. What's that? I ain't know. Well, you're going to have to trust me. Yeah. And see, there, well, I ain't going to try you. You're going to trust you instead. How's that worked out? Okay, anyways, trust in the Lord with how much? Oh. All your heart. Oh. See, God works from the inside out where you're jacked up. Yeah. He gets to the root immediately. Trust the Lord with all your heart. Lean not to your, this is, a, this is, a, this is instruction. This is one of the first instructions on your course. And if you don't take correction, you don't take correction, you don't have direction, and you're lost. And it, the direction is lean not to your own thinking. Don't trust yourself to your thinking. Don't depend on your thoughts. Glory to God. In all your way, how many? Everything you do, what? Acknowledge him. Okay, wait a minute. Wait, 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 I'm, getting, I'm getting ready to brush my teeth. Lord, you never leave me nor forsake me. So what, you think he leaves you because you're brushing your teeth? Everybody else does because you spit all over the mirror and do all that. Other. No one will be around that. But God don't book on you. And God will show you how not to be spewing all over the mirror and hitting the target. And Amen. If you acknowledge him. In all your ways, acknowledge him, and he shall. Look, it's not a test. This is not a test. I mean, you got to be some kind of stupid. No, you got to be some kind of special to have the answers and miss, miss an A. Okay, look at it again. In all your ways, acknowledge him, and what? He tell you the answers. He, he show you the way. He tell you what moves to make. He didn't say try this. That's your next step to what? Glory. Hallelujah. That's your next step to beyond your heart's desires. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Okay, I need you to, I need you to 
write those in the front of your Bible. Look at those all the time. I told you some things just stick with you because I start saying, well, how am I going to? You know, many are the way. I got a lot of plans, but your what is what is your purpose? What is your will that stands? You got, you got I gotta go to them. I could give you more, more in proverb. You know, uh, a man's heart directs his path or makes the plan, but it's the Lord that orders the steps. <laughs> you, 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 yeah, we ain't going to go that way. <laughs> Not to put you down. You don't know. You don't have a clue. You have no other access to finding out. And he don't hide it from you. People are hiding themselves out from it. People are disqualifying themselves. Oh, you got it, Lord. Here I am. This is what you said. This is your promise. So if I do this, cause... And effect means do this, and the results are up to him. Yes. Do this, he brings the pass. Yes. Yes. Okay. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So I told you, without correction, we have no direction. And with no direction, obviously, we're lost. But God came to seek the lost. So they wouldn't be lost anymore. He don't find the lost. Say, oh, I found you. You're lost. Glad I found you. He found you lost and said, come on, because I got something for you. Glory to God. Now, I told you how God leads, how he corrects, how he chastens, how he flogs. It had nothing to do physically. Sickness, disease, all that. No, that's religious bunk. The devil would love nothing more for you to believe that. He corrects you. Everything we read, heart, inside out inside out in fact you continue getting deeper in your plans god just resists the proud and that's nothing you can you can get as high as you want to ain't gonna ease that you can have as much pleasure you want to ain't gonna ease that it's inside out you can't get that off you you gotta go to the source you can't scratch that itch any mm -mm. that's his spot and only he can address it Amen. Amen. Glory to God. Uh, so I told you how God, so it's practical, corrects us. And it's not by circumstances and situations. It's internally out. He first of all teaches us what? By his word. And it doesn't go, it, you know, nothing gets away from the word. Everything's tied from God is tied. How you, how you just, you can't separate God from his word. Anymore we can separate you from your word. So it's never going to get outside his word, but it starts with his word and revolves around the word. God doesn't do anything without first speaking, declaring his word. Spend some time in his word, you're going to see it. His path. He never does anything without first declaring it. So everything revolves around his word. That's why my, my life will forever revolve around his word. If you need more than that, he's giving you an unction, an anointing of the Holy Spirit. That's that inside I'm talking about. That's your, why you're so uncomfortable. Yeah. And that you can't get that off of you. Right. And you better thank God for it because God's trying to get you. Come on, come on. You know, you know, you, you know. He knocked Paul, Saul on his posterior, <laughs> blinded the boy temporarily. You know. And you've been murdering folk and enough is enough. You know you've been going the wrong direction. You not didn't know, you know it. Hard to kick against them pricks, huh, Saul? What, what do you, he didn't say, what are, you, what are you talking about, Lord? He didn't even say, who is this? Because you know. You better humble yourself and acknowledge the one you know. Hey, yes, sir. You don't have to. He's not going to make you. But you ain't going nowhere without him. You don't, you're not even on course. You're off course. means you're out of bounds. That is not a place to live. Amen. Finally, I told you about counselors. Those are, are, are God-honoring people who have fruit. I mentioned people by name. Look, that doesn't mean I ain't going to tell you your course. And they're not going to tell you your course. That's why I mentioned them. They're going to point you back to the Word and the Holy Spirit 
And if anything else, their own personal experience, they got fruit, their own personal experience. In the word, by the Holy Spirit. Not for you to copy. It's going to be in the same line because God doesn't make you. So why would I make you? I couldn't make you. Going to point you back to the word. And everything. Are, are you all with me? So I want you to bear, okay, Proverbs 19, 16, 3. I want you to have that all in mind. How does God, how does he little break it down to giving us direction, correction, so we're not lost, stay on course? His word, his word, his word. You should be filled with the Holy Spirit. You should be every born-again child of God. Every man, woman, and child, child who's born again should be filled, baptized with the Holy Spirit. Have an unction from him and pray and building yourself up spiritually every day on your most holy faith. But, but he'll give you the Holy Spirit, and, and beyond that, he'll give you. And see, that's, that's a lot of you, first thing they're going to tell you. You're filled with the Holy Spirit. Why, why are you talking to me? No, no, according to Scripture, are you filled with the Holy Spirit? Do you have a language you do not speak, you do not know? Huh? What? Yeah, biblically. <laughs> Amen. Those are the ways. Now, God gave me this example. Uh, I mentioned to you before, I'm very much into aviation. I can never think of a time I've never been, in, you know, interested in, 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 in airplanes. I think my 10th birthday or something like that, I was flying an airplane. Um, can't remember a time. Hey. Oh, I got to pick something up at the airport. Can I go? <laughs> I never understood why people, <gasps> I'm going. You better not go to the airport without me. I now have apps where I can track every flight. Oh, they give you too much information. Yeah, it's like, wow, come on, man, really? But yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, I know what aircraft is, what kind of, it's called equipment, what kind of equipment, you, the, the, ooh, your destination, how you been, oh, man. I can track it. Glory to God. And on top of that, then, then he flew around and gave me another one. Now, now I can hear him. Pilot and tower talking. One day night took, took, took Ryan out there, San Leandro to the park, just sat by, because that's, that's the beginning of the landing for Oakland. And she started actually kind of getting into it. Huh. Listen, 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 which plane is that? That one right there, watch this one. I mean, you, you might, too, can't, come, I like it though. <laughs> I even watch shows. See you at home. That that you don't get. You don't. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. I just got. I just got a dart. I just got slapped. Just minding my business, doing. I ain't saying nothing about nobody. Y'all, Lord. I watch it by myself. That was my wife, cause she can't watch it. I tell you can't watch that. There's one she can't watch. And I, I and I watch. I watch shows on aviation. I watch shows. Man, they, 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 they praise the Lord. So I'm very interested, but. You know, I, I, look, a desire of my heart, a desire of my heart, I cannot remember ever being without it. I'll tell you again, the strangest day in the world to me, people didn't even understand, was 01 9-11. I live in the Bay Area. There are hundreds of planes in the sky above you right now. Doesn't matter. You don't know or see them. I can't. I, I plane spot all the time. And to be out in, it was the eeriest thing. We got private airports up and down. We got three major international airports. That was weird. And I would, so I drove by them. You never seen an airport or parking lot? Weirdest thing. All of a sudden, you understand how many are up there because they're all on the ground. And they're fit on run. They were all, man. Weirdest thing. Anyhow, okay. So I know a little something about aviation. I don't know it all. I can't fly yet. Can't fly. But I mean, if, it, if the pilot go out <laughs> and I'm on the plane, I didn't say it all to him, but I've been studying this for a long time. <laughs> if there's not another pilot on here, get out the way. I, I'll, I'm going to share with you right now. I, it, it's a perfect illustration. That's why I like, see, it's I desire my heart because God knew it. Because it's the perfect illustration of faith. And you all bore these things, and you don't understand. Them people up there are going by total faith. Because they don't know 
nothing. They can't see nothing. If they could, they would crash. Know that. Oh, I've studied this. Now. Okay, so here, so here we go. I want you to keep all, everything we covered in mind. So I'm going to give you some things to write down. Well, first of all, uh, well, no, I'm going to save them. I know you got one, two, and three. Uh, Just start taking these statements I'm going to give you down. You can start on the number one and fill, you know, spread them out. And I'm, going to be about, I'm going to give you about six or so. You can spread them out because they, they fit to that. But I'm not going to tell them to you till the end because then at the end, like, zoop, you should zip it all up like, yeah, okay. Because so I tell you now, you're like, eh, no, no, you can, okay. So you all with me? Yeah. First thing, using aviation as an example for you to get. Pilots are amazing. You know everyone's life is in their hands. Not just on their craft. Not just on their equipment, but every equipment in their vicinity. And all y'all neighborhoods. Yeah. Oh, this ain't no joke. And pilots, these are some of the strictest rules they follow. See, they might be flying the plane, but they don't know what to do without the tower. They don't have a clue without the tower. The tower is God, you a pilot. God's got you on course to glory, you don't have a clue. The tower's got the pilot going where they need to go, they don't have a clue. Are you ready? So here we go. Number one, no plane will get off the ground or ever fly. They will not be cleared. They will be taken down. It is illegal. No plane will fly without first declaring a destination. Where are you going? Let me say that again. No plane will get off the ground without first declaring a destination. That's private craft. That's, mm -mm. You got to declare your intention. Mm. So many just meaning living meaningless lives. I'm telling you, like, I'm just getting up. You don't know where you're going. Man, you got no, no right to be out here. At least shoot at something. Now, I'd suggest, I mean, the best, ask the tower. <laughs> but you should have heard from the tower. And so you should be getting up and saying, this is where I'm going, tower. Tower's like, glad you agree. Amen. All right. Second thing. No plane flies. No plane can fly without first filing a flight plan. It all goes to the tower. It doesn't go in the atmosphere. You don't, just, you don't write the flight plan and throw it out the window. You got to inform the tower. No plane will fly. Well, you know what I'm saying? They will, it's illegal. They're going to come get you. They're going to take you down. You're not cleared. You're not getting off the ground without first. And y'all know planes are meant to fly. Not getting off the ground without first fi filing a flight plan where you won't go. And then you got to tell them, this is how I plan on getting there. At least this is how I think about it. This is, I think I'm going to get there. You got to tell them your intentions. In all your ways, acknowledge him. Yeah. He shall make it plain. He the tower. Yeah. You the pilot. You got no clue? He does. Mm -hmm. See, the thing about the tower is they know everything. Yeah. They ain't just looking at you. Right. I wish I could show you. Right now, if you just saw, you don't have any idea. There are hundreds of flights above your head right now. Here. I ain't talking about where I'm talking about in this area. Sometimes I open my app. It, 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 you, know, you scale in and out with, you know, like your Google Earth, all that stuff. And it, I mean, you, can't even, you can't even see the Bay Area for all the little planes. I got to zoom in. Oh, there's some ground. Because it's covered. The tower knows all that. Oh, that tower job, boy. They lead that to God. They know every plane, speed, 
altitude. Pilots can't see each other. Tower seas, you know, destinations, all of it. Working it all together. Okay, you ain't in the spirit. You're not in the spirit. Working it all together for the good of those who trust. You don't listen to the tower, you're going to crash, and you're going to take others with you. Okay, okay, yeah, 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 yeah. Now, after they declare their destination and file their what? With the other thing. They're, they're ready to what? Fly now. Take off. Rule number three, you, every pilot knows they have to constantly, moment by moment, constantly monitor the tower. Who's monitoring their flight course? No, 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 no. Pa pilots can't casually check in with the tower. They must constantly be in contact with the tower. Why? Because actually they're altering their course. They're correcting their flight course. They are altering their plan. They didn't really care about their plan. Just had to know you knew what you was doing. You had some kind of concept. And they now going to take over. Y'all got that? Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. Constantly. Why? Because one plane, the, the one you're on, you're looking out the window. You don't see them planes? I guarantee there's at least 50 planes around you. Not going in the same direction. Above you, under you, some coming at you. Pilots will tell you, at any given time, within a five-mile right radius, maybe 10-mile radius, there are 500 to 1,000 flights. And they can't see them. You know, that's, that's a problem. How, how fast your plane going? Oh, 500 miles an hour cruise speed. Huh? 500 mile cruise speed. Okay, if two of y'all cruising, just cruising at 500, that's a thousand miles per hour. What are you talking about, Pastor? Yeah, if you're going in opposite direction. Do you know how long it takes you to travel a mile? I said, do you know how long it takes you to travel a mile at a thousand? So you have to add them, they're going against each other. Have you ever been in a plane and looked out your window and seen another plane go past you? You probably don't because you blink. It happens all the time. It takes you less than half, four tenths of a, uh, four hundredths of a second to go a mile when you're going, <laughs> you're dead. I'll check in with the tower and I want to. I don't think so. Acknowledge him and all. Commit your ways. To trust also. Your, your, your thoughts will be, as, they're completely tuned in to the tower. If planes went by what they saw, we'd all be dead. Y'all with me? Y'all get in there? <laughs> so they're regularly being told, pilots are regularly being told, slow down. But we got clear, clear air. That means it's smooth and all that stuff, good visibility. Like we should pick up some speed. We got clear air. Well, you know, it seems like we should, you know, you should up our speed. They say, slow down. The customer could be saying, a passenger could be saying, we're late. Speed it up. The CEO who owns that plane could be telling the pilot, we late. I won't get there now. Speed up. The pilot will say, tower told slow down. I pay your salary. I own this jet. I'm telling you, speed up. Sir? Get out of my cockpit, or I'll have you arrested. I, the tower said, you might be the CEO on the ground. Right. Up here, right. tower is your boss. And that's what will happen. Why do you think they have airport police? You think people who can't function on the ground are automatically going to function right? In the, you better be praying over your flight. I own this. I'm waiting for a certain uh, celebrity's uh, NTSB, that's National Transit Safety Board. They investigate. It doesn't matter who you are, where you are. They, they investigate your crash, and I'm waiting for a certain celebrity's helicopter crash to, to review it because, because I guarantee you. I almost guarantee. I know what it is. It's, I don't, it, it, one of the passengers said, get me there now. And that pilot broke 
the law, broke the rule. Nope. Don't care how much money you got. I don't care you paying for me. It's against the law. And it costs. Flying is very safe. It's the most safe it is. Your car, you please. That's why she don't. I, I watch one. That's why they investigate every crash. You know why? It can't happen again. And they alter equipment, procedures, everything to make sure. Mm -mm, mm -mm. That's why you got towers. That's why they have the technology they have. You couldn't have as many flights you have now without the technology they have. Because it's not safe. Flying is one of the safest things you can do. Unless you get somebody. Don't follow. It doesn't just impact their life. It just doesn't endanger their life. So, you know. You'll be on flight. I've been on flight, man. I, you know, I, I flew in my first Learjet when I was probably seven. I've been in this thing a long time. Hey, praise the Lord. Slow down. I remember, slow down. Why? We got a Learjet. A Learjet, every pilot wants to fly a Learjet, even to this day, because it, it's, it really was, okay, this is too much. It was really designed, I believe, by a Swiss company as, as a, as a, as a uh, fighter jet. They got turned down. They said, oh, I'm going to take it to America. In America, we'll make this for commercial, but it's a fighter jet. So every pilot, oh, you got to live? I'm going to fly there. Because pilots are pilots. Yeah. Amen. And I was on a Learjet. Man, forget it. The old school had the, the tanks. Okay, praise the Lord. And uh, we were told, slow down. And every little, little, little I mean, I, you, you get on, you can, you can hear, you can dial, you, know, you can change frequency. For every, this, this, slow down. I'm like, why are we slowing down? It's all clear. Nice day like this. <laughs> and, and we was joyriding. We was joyriding. And we're going, and then, because you can't see nothing. Yeah. And it's okay, you can speed back up. Okay. And you're never really as close to the planes as you think you are. Know that. And all of a sudden, we see above. Shoom! They're just small. I don't remember the, what kind of commercial. This is a commercial. Like them buses. See, what you don't see is there's turbulence. All right. That's why you, they, got to, they got a space. And see, if we go wrong, we're dead. Behind, not hitting it, but you see that thing go by like that. Would We would have we we <laughs> we collided. But their wake, y'all yeah. know about wake. See, that's air turbulence. Yeah, yeah. yeah just take a plane like that out. So they, he's got thread us right through it. Speed up now so you can see it. Because they know we're enjoying See it go through, but the turbulence is going to come behind and we're gone. Otherwise, you're an afterthought. I mean, this is no joke. This, they, I'm telling you, it's the safest thing because you don't hear about crashes. When there aren't that many crashes. And most of them are human. Almost all of them. Either in the cockpit, in the tower. Okay, never mind. Or on the, side, on the ground. Uh, you know. Okay, praise the Lord. I got I to get you through this. Wait, wait, wait. How many have I given you? I gave you three. three. Okay. God tells you, leave that person alone. Don't get with him or her. Tower has spoken. Well, you know, I ain't getting no younger. Don't get involved with that person, is what the tower said. And you're supposed to repeat everything that is spoken. Everything the tower says, you better say. Or the tower gonna come back, did you read? You don't read, they're gonna come get you. What do you mean they're gonna come get you? Fighter planes, other th this this is real. Can't afford to have you up there doing whatever you want to do. Glory to God. God can't afford to have you crashing in, endangering everybody. Don't mess with that person. See, he knows everything. Storms, other aircraft, all this and that. And you're like, well, you know, you're, you're, oh, there's no time. We're talking about time earlier. You know, you know, ain't getting no younger. Yeah, but you don't understand. Five miles away off, off your port side. Now, now I'm in the nautical, too, and air, air and aviation and nautical go, okay, praise the Lord. But the, off your port side is, is the one for you. But you're trying to get involved with this one over. You're trying to track it. And then wonder, because you got thoughts. They're just stupid. That's the problem. <laughs> and you miss God's perfect. And now you're with this person. Oh, this is like hell on earth. 
But the tower, you can't deny it. The tower told you. So if the tower told you to be with that person, it don't matter what it looked like, what turbulence you go through, you better be with that person. Tower don't make mistakes. Pilots do and crash. Tower, mm-mm. Amen. Y'all with me? Okay, we got it. I just had to hide it. Anybody get anything out of this? So here you go. You must obey all the directions as received now. Not later. Pilots know they must what? Obey all directions now. You're going 500 miles an hour. You can't do it in a second. You can't do it in 30 seconds. You can't do it in a minute. Your position has drastically changed. Everything's constantly moving. Glory to God. Are y'all here? Yeah. <laughs> Even when things look like they're failures, they're wrong. Why are we flying this way? It, we, you can see it. It's dark clouds. We're going right in these clouds. Then the rain starts hitting. Starts hitting. Why are we going? Tower. You can check with tower. tower. Stay, stay, stay in your heading. Maintain heading. Maintain heading. Stay the course. Maintain heading. I'm like, but it's raining, isn't it? Yeah, but you're not in the tornado. When it's bumpy on the plane, y'all, it's bumpy. You all, why are you nervous? It's the safest thing you're doing. You're in turbulence. Oh, it's bumpy. It's better. It's the best. It's better than if they go higher. It's better than they go left. It's better if they go lower. This is the best. Just know, oh, we're making it through here. You know, the pilot got to get home, too. You better rethink yourself. You better humble yourself real quick. The tower knows all. He can't. Maintain that heading. This looks like. Maintain. Okay, now, altitude, 201. 21,000 feet. Why are we going up? Quit asking questions. <laughs> the tower knows everything. Because now there's lightning down there. And planes don't like lightning. Look at y'all. Mm -mm, mm. <laughs> <laughs> They're safe. You don't think light? Okay. But a lightning strike's not going to kill a plane. Okay, never mind. Never mind. You know that? Okay, anyhow. <laughs> and after that, it's okay. Re return altitude, one seven, seventeen thousand. Why are we doing all this? They guiding you perfectly through everything you can and can't see. It just looks bumpy. It just looks rough. You know. I thought God told me to start this business, and now it's out of business. Maintain hidden. Did He tell you something different? I thought God told me to marry this person. They acting ugly. Maintain that hidden. It could look like everything's chaos. Maintain that hidden. You you don't want deep. You think this is bad? It's for your good. Uh uh uh. You think this is bad? For your good. Say for my good. Just to shortcut it, I mean, see, this is how people, they crack up all the time. It's supposed to be Christian. It's supposed to be, I trust the Lord. I trust the Lord with all my heart. No, you don't. You quit when you see adversity. You quit as soon as things don't look. You can't fly like that. What did the tower say? What did the tower say? See, the other thing you can do in a plane is you can change frequencies. You can hear what other pilots say. You could be listening because you're listening to the tower. You hear other pilots. They're talking about what great weather it is over here. It's clear over here. Smooth air. They like to talk about that stuff. And you're in turbulence and rain and this and that. And you got your little GPS little thing and that. But if you think, I'm going to beeline it over there, you're, mm, they're 50 miles away. Which is close. But you got to go with the tower. You're going to hear about stuff going on around you. You got to listen to the tower. You cannot be a pilot if you violate these. They're going to ground you. 
So if you ain't fine, you wondering why you ain't listening. <laughs> just just a short line for look. Just go back to Genesis. God said, Abraham, kill Isaac. Give me Isaac. But I believe that's my blessing. That's my business. That's my boot. This don't look good. Yeah, kill him. Now, when I tell you, Abraham knew to stop being stupid. He was stupid. He learned not to be stupid. He was stupid. He learned not to be stupid. Didn't ask questions. Didn't talk back in the tower. Offer Isaac. Copy. Receive. Own it. Roger. Copy. That's all you, you got to repeat. Don't tell me God don't know what he's doing. And God says, that is what are you doing at now? Everything's clear. You're, you're, you're clear for your destiny. You think too much. And you never shut up. I said you think too much. And you always wonder why. I said you think too much. You don't even know what I'm doing. Y'all, even, even. Y'all got this hip-hop, which is not rap, which is not any art anymore. Hey, it just isn't. You sampled everything. Can't articulate. Here's a Here's some. Have a point. <laughs> How many Bentleys can you drive? How many chains can you wear? Who? Here's, here's an idea. Have a point. People like to listen to points. Anyhow, you think too much. You never. Okay, raise the Lord. Go ahead and get it. Drop this friend. Get away from these people now. Like, well, uh, I'm a, and people don't do it because they care about what the people think of them. You're a people pleaser. That's why you crash. God told you, don't fool with them. Okay. I, I got to get this in. Just give me a couple minutes. I got to get it because I, 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 the tower cleared me. <laughs> uh, you, can, you can jump. There's a parachute right there. I ain't crashing. I ain't crashing. Drop that friend. Lose those associations. Stop being with them people. God didn't ask you to consider that. Do it now. Later going to be too late. Do it now. Um, ladies and gentlemen, I can't tell you how many destructive habits have been started in just the people you know, not your lives, but people's lives. And it was all Friends. I'm convinced this. Watch this. All these people going to have Super Bowl parties. They doesn't, it's an excuse to get high and drunk. You wouldn't begin to, no, no alcohol, no, no drugs here. No, I ain't going. It's a cover. It's an excuse. You ain't social. You're antisocial. You can't be with people except high. No kid started smoking in the room by themselves. Weed or otherwise, you are with your so-called friend. Nobody likes to taste the alcohol. Nobody. That's why with all the girls, they put a whole bunch of sugar in there, and that's why you know that's a, that's a girl's drink. But all kind of all them flavors, all this stuff, make it blue and turquoise and all this, because it's nasty. <laughs> it's nasty. I used to drink E&J straight. It's, because I'm grown. We're friends. That stuff, you pour it in the cup, and the cup warms up immediately. <laughs> I'm 12, 13. <sighs> That's what you see. <coughs> Can't do that. <clears throat> we get the whole, man, I mean, friends. Friends, have a point. Hip hop die. You ain't got nothing. Friends, come on. Oh, friends. I've been telling you for years. The pastor don't want to have no friends. You ain't got no true friends. Your entire life, you're going to have three, four, if you lived on 100. Five, because the freaks come out at night. 
The freaks come out at night. <laughs> and freaks ain't your friends. These are, and you learn to condone behavior in them and in yourself. Crash Tower didn't say that. You learn to people please to the follow direction of the tower. See, I had a plan. I didn't know God my whole life. I came as an adult. I, okay, I'll save that. I, I don't have time for that. I don't have time for that. Uh, I don't have time for that. Well, I, I had filed a flight plan, though. I'm going to NFL as a kid. That's what kept me from, well, you see, I, I, I veered. Well, course correction. Uh, yeah. Alcohol, drugs, couldn't keep me. That's why I didn't fall. That's why, why everybody in the neighborhood died? Why they go to jail? Why, why? I live on the other side. Took my son over there one time. Stanford Mall, you think you, you think you, you know, think you're safe there, you know. Don't get more bougie than that, you know, Stanford, Stanford, not, not mall, excuse me, uh, shopping center. You think you're pretty, you know, can't get more bougie than that in the wealthiest place in America. Walk over my son. I don't know, made, I don't know if he's in high school yet. Old stomping grounds. Think, 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 I'm, think I'm cool. Slick! Rick! Oh. <laughs> One of my good friends back then. Come run out, run out the store, see him. I think he's with. I know he had his daughter with it. I don't know who else he was with. Came out here. Hey, yo, yo. Vicky's like, who this? I don't know who this is. Who this? I didn't expose you. And just, you know, we talking. Just, oh, yeah, I just got out. You, you heard that. Just got out. You know, just, just Vicky's like, God, uh, Dad. Uh. <laughs> Friends. Having a plan kept me from, not a God plan, just a plan. Okay, because here's the, here's the deal. Because prison, look, your friends get you in. You're, they're not friends, first of all, but you call them friends. They're not friends. Them people who hoorahed you and co-opt you to condone sin. Let's be clear, sin. If you are sitting at home, at the end of your day, beginning of your day, you, you just need a little nip, a little wine, a little thing, knock the edge off. You know, you're, on a, you're on a course. You know the destiny. You're an alcoholic. No. Y'all, everybody know. You start out smoking a little. Okay, first of all, you don't know what weed is today. This stuff is. Whole, but anyhow, if you sitting there, I just, you know, just puff on my own or puff over here. First of all, you didn't get it on your own. And you ain't puffing on your own. And you keep puffing, we all know where you end up, addict. Okay, if all you drink is soda, we know where you ended up. The choices you are making, it's not, I don't, you know, I'm not a prophet just because I'm right. You got your own thoughts. You believed your own lies, thinking it's going to take you somewhere good. God designed you to fly, you're still trying to catch your feelings. You lay down with him or her trying to catch your feelings, see? Well, you, you know where you're going to end up with that? Disease, pregnant, out of wedlock, body wore up, look like it's thrown in a trash can. Oh, it's in the Word. You're going to be eating from the inside out. The fornicator kept going until the dart shot through their liver. Thought, oh, I'll get away with this. No. And you can't do that stuff on your own. And these are not friends. And they led you all into these destructive behaviors. Or I wonder how many of you led people into destructive behaviors. And God said what? Cut them. Because he knows everything going around you. It's not for you to sit there and go, I don't know about that one. No. A pilot knows we have to take every direction now because our lives are at stake. You cannot have, you can't be a pilot. Here's, here was number five. You cannot have 
selective obedience. You cannot select what directions you're going to take. Are you with me? <laughs> Romans 8, 28. God works everything together for the good of those who love him. Not everybody. Of those who love him. Those who love him follow the tower. They do what he directs and says. Come on, y'all with me? Yeah. And that's why he's able to what? Work all this with all these things flying and spinning and weather and conditions. Too much heat, planes can't go. The air's too thin. So he, he knows all this stuff. He knows the future from the beginning. And he completed it. And he knows how to get you along safely where you need to go. You can't be selective. Drop them people. Get away from them. That's a whole other message because you've been conditioned by your parents, most of you to need people. Get along with your siblings. Fit in the class. Don't, don't do it. Do what the teacher says. Should be telling them. You in that word? You, you even discovering what the tower is yet? I, I, got, I got directed to the tower first. You're going to listen to them or him. Amen. Y'all get anything? Yeah. Uh, I, I hate, I hate, I'm not, a, I'm not bound by it. I, I hate the clock. I hate the clock. I hate the clock. Just think, just think through your life. I know every destructive habit I had, there's somebody right there. That's a problem. And hindsight is 2020. That's clear to me why. And getting back to, you know, the plan I had as a kid, because you can't be in shape and do that. I can't stay out, do all this, and do that. It's the power of a plan. It wasn't God's plan. It was my plan. But before Jesus, he used football as my salvation and spared a whole lot of other people. I was no prize. So Satan can tell you. Amen. Now you're trying to catch me riding bail. Okay. <laughs> Don't got to try. Okay, praise God. Don't, what? Come on now. This, twice today. Twice. I'm up here minding my own. I said, ain't got to try. She said, no. <laughs> can I get, can a pastor get some love? Praise the Lord. <laughs> All right, here's the last one. Y'all getting this? Yeah. Rule, rule for pilots. Pilots can never take direction from other pilots, ever. You can listen, and they do. They listen to each other. They find weather ahead of them or you know, an idea anyway, an idea of airports running fast, slow, all this. You know, but they will never take what another pilot is saying as direction. Oh, yeah, the counselors, true counselors, they're not going to give you direction. They're going to point you to the tower for direction. They're not going to tell you what you want to hear with them bad friends. They're not trying to be your friend. Counselors, pilots, other pilots who are accomplished aren't going to tell you to listen. Listen to me. Don't listen to the tower. Listen to me. That, no, that ain't no counselor. A counselor will tell you, I've been flying a long time. Towers never led me wrong. I'm experiencing this over here. I'm flying this head and over here this, at the tower's direction. All I can tell you is you better follow the tower's direction for you, too. Right. Don't you be following me. Yeah. What God's going to do for me, what he did for you, lie. Where what? You're, 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 it's not a lie. You're reading that wrong. You got wrong perspective. God told Joshua. Okay, I don't know if you know these people. God told Joshua, I'm going to be with you just like I was with Moses because Joshua was Moses' the servant. So he had a front row seat to see how God did for Moses. And he's chickening out because he's not depending on the tower. He was people pleasing with Moses. But now Moses is dead. And the tower's saying, Boy, you better look at me. I'm going to be with you just like I was with Moses. Well, you look at, you read, have you ever read Joshua? Or maybe you didn't read the first five books. Moses. 
Because he didn't do one thing with Joshua that he did with Moses. Not one thing. That's not what he said. He said, I'm, I'm the tower. I'm, I'm going to get you just like I got Moses to where you need to go. Moses didn't get there because he deviated from one direction I gave him. I told him to speak, and he went to hitting, and you're crashed. You're out. He would have made it, and I'm going to be the same way with you. I ain't going to lead you wrong. I'm going to get you. I'm going to tell you, but you got to follow. And you tell him, you got to follow me like Moses did. Tell you saw him do that. That's why you're here. That's a big lesson. You don't need people. Okay, uh, you you need the tower. The tower will direct you what you're supposed to do unto other people, but you don't need them. Amen. You can't follow them. I'm an expert for pilot. And you're supposed to follow me as I follow the tower. Amen. Amen. Not copy. Praise the Lord. So, so what, what was the last one? Pilots never take direction from other pilots. How many was that? Six. All right. Yeah. That's all you want to do today. <laughs> Go to Romans 8. Y'all know how to land. I say I can get you. I can get you. So watch. I'm going right to the tower. I'm going right to the tower. Got to land. I got to finish this. Got to land. Go right to the tower. When, while you're turning to Romans 8, listen. Glory to God. You're so, you're amazing, Father. Okay. Glory to God. There are two times. This is why I know it's coming up in the NTSB it's the investigation I'm waiting for. It takes about two years to do it. So it's due for a certain high-profile helicopter crash. When you take off and before taking off, you must have a sterile cockpit. And when you land, the cockpit must be sterile. What does that mean? They get the lights all out of them for COVID? No, 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 no. Sterile cockpit means nobody and a mama. Everybody locked out. Locked out. Nobody but the flight crew. And the flight crew is at least the pilot and the first officer. Both are pilots. It, it just, well, one's captain, technically, the other one's first officer. They can't do anything unilaterally. There might be others. There might be navigators and this and that. It depends on how big the bird is, the equipment. But there's, there's two up there. They can't have anybody else up there. That's what it means by a sterile cockpit. If somebody, if they let, like, Richard come up front, when it's still landing and take off, goodbye. And lock. It's a law. I'm landing. So I get back to the tower. Romans 8. Sterile cockpit. Ain't looking at you. Ain't listening to you. We landed. Safely. At our destination. Romans chapter 8. If you got to say, I got it. Yes. Glory to God. Now, for sake of time, I'm gonna, I'm, now Romans 8 is amazing because verse 14 tells you the only true children of God, the only true pilots are those who are led by the Spirit of God. Listen to the tower. Not every child of God says a child of God is a child of God. That's what it says, Romans 8, 14. And go on down to 15, 16 because we've got, we got connections to the tower. The frequency is never broken. We got this technology that the enemy can't hijack, can't, can't distort. We received the Holy Spirit. Amen. And now, so you're going to be a joint heir. You're destined. You're destined. If you suffer with, if you go through the tower's direction, so you're not lost. And even when you get off course, they're able to bring you back. And they'll even lead you. You'll think everything's falling apart. They're leading you wrong. Yea, though you walk through the valley of the shadow of death, you better understand you're on the right course. He got you. And you better understand. Now, I don't fear. That's why I told you earlier in that turbulence. You better thank God. Everybody gripping white knuckling. You better thank God. This is a safe way. Yeah. Woo! This is the way we getting there. Yeah. I'm scared, Pastor. Cause, Cause fear, see? 
because of lack of knowledge. My people are destroyed. Come on. Okay. Not natural knowledge, spiritual knowledge. Amen. You in Romans 8? So I can't read the whole thing, but drop down to verse 26. There's a, there's a context here, and it revolves all around the Word and the Holy Spirit and the child of God. The tower. Are you with me? In verse 26, it says, Likewise, the Spirit, the tower, also helps us with our infirmities, for we know not what we should pray. It doesn't say we don't know how to pray. We know how to fly. We don't know what's up. We don't know the conditions. We don't know what's going on around us. We don't know, uh, you know the weather where we're heading. We don't know any of that. Wind, speeds, any of that. All are significant to that plane getting there safely. So the Spirit helps our infirmities, for we know not what's going on, what we should pray for as we ought. You want to be successful, you got to know that stuff. Well, we don't, but the tower does. But the Spirit himself makes intercession. He tells us. He gets on the intercom. Intercession. He gets on the intercom. Making intercession for us with groanings which cannot be uttered. They can't be scrambled. They can't be distorted. Because no one understands it. However, you're speaking directly to the tower. Glory to God. Oh. And he that searches the hearts knows all the weather, all the flight plans, all the destinations, all the happenings, all the altitudes. The one who knows it all, he searches the hearts, knows what is the mind of the spirit because he makes intercession for the good pilots, the saints, according to God. Will of isn't there. Power. So he's doing it according to God. He is God. So if he's helping you, God's doing it. Glory to God. Glory to God. So that's the context if you're going to keep reading. It's about you. The Holy Spirit, the child of God's dependence on the tower. That's what Romans 8 is about. Now, there's no condemnation. Yeah, to a child who walks in dependence on the tower. A child who runs away from home, doesn't file a destination, doesn't file a flight, man, outlaw. But the child who listens to the tower, that's what this is about. So look at verse 28, because everybody comes here and is alive, the way they quote it, the way they tell. And we know all things. Work together for the good. You can't say that. That's a lie. Because I don't stand how your baby being murdered, how that worked. That, that don't make no sense. Death is an enemy. So, hmm. Doesn't say that. We know that all things work together for the good to them. Oh, it's a specific group. That what? Love God. Those who love God. Who loves God? Those who follow the tower's directions. Jesus said, if you love me, you keep my ways. Your life, your behavior, they resemble it. They, they reflect it. Amen? Amen? Anybody getting anything? Because yeah. he's getting you to the plans that are exceeding abundantly above. Oh, my goodness. He says, and we know that all things work together for the good to them that love him, who are called according to his, which stands. Many are the plans and the so you got to have, I told you, keep the Proverbs. Many are the plans in a person's mind and heart, but it's only the purpose of counsel of the Lord that stands to them who are called according to purpose. For whom he did foreknow, just because he knew you before you did. You didn't get that. Just because he knew you before you know you, before you know him, doesn't guarantee you're going to get there. But with the Holy Spirit, it does. Your reliance on the tower does. For who he did foreknow, he also did predestinate. You filed the flight plan, but he set the destiny. He predestined it because he knew you ahead of time. He knew who was going to choose him. He didn't make them choose him because that's their choice. If he selected people, like if the election of God is at his choosing, well, that invalidates all of Scripture because he gave, he made you in his image likeness, and he chooses. And he told you, I give you choice. I call heaven and earth. So if he makes, if he chooses you without your choice, he violated himself, destroyed himself, broke his word before you ever got started. So you got a faulty religion. That's a bad doctrine. Whom he did foreknow, he knows everybody. That don't mean they saved. But he knows before who is going to come to the tower and fall direction. So he predestinates them to that glory, to be conformed to the image of his son, that he might be the firstborn among many. No one's like getting to the destination on your own by yourself. 
Yeah, get off that plane. Oh, we're all here? Y'all ready to have fun now? Yeah, okay. Moreover, whom he did predestinate, he didn't predestinate. He, he, you see, it's a progress. You won't be honest with me. You got to read the whole thing. You can't. He predestinated us. No, he didn't. If I choose him, I'm predestinated. If I choose him, I'm predestinated. If you don't, you ain't got no predestination. If I don't, I don't have any predestination. And he doesn't choose. I do. You do. And when we choose, there's no question where we're going. It's predetermined. It's predestiny. It's predestined. Glory to the image of his own son. He might be the firstborn. Is that what it says? He might be the firstborn among two? Many. Image of he'd be the first born, born among many. Moreover, whom he did predestinate, them he also called. And whom he called, them he also justified. And whom he justified, <laughs> destiny he also glorified. Many are called, everybody called. Few pick up. That's the scripture. That's what you can bear out. He's not picking arbitrarily. You think this is a lottery? He so loved the world, whosoever can come. It's just so many who's ain't. But you are. I am. And that means we're flying by the tower. We're not flying by our senses because that would crash. No, we're flying by the tower's direction now and always. That's how we prove we love him. That's how he's able to work everything together for the good. To have to work everything together for the good, what does that tell you? Listen, listen closely. To work everything together for the good. What does that tell you? Everything ain't good. Yeah, you think you know these. No, you think you know what someone else thought they heard somebody else say when they thought they read the Bible. And you're supposed to get it from the tower yourself. And that's a bunch of lies. Mm -mm. God tell you it ain't all good. How, how do you have to redeem you then if it's all good? Why he got to work if it's all good? Through the storm, through the adversity. Yea, though I walk through the valley of shadow of death. Yo, I got I to I gotta, I gotta offer up my own son. God's always done this. It's the quitters. It's the fake children who quit because he comes to correct. He comes to purify. He comes to give them course correction so they know their directions and don't get lost. And they quit because it looks too hard. That's not God. Start calling God a demon. They the ones lost. Well, if God wanted me to have it, I'd have it. Oh, go, what? God wanted you to have it, so he predestinated it. He made the course for you, and he broadcast your, dire your direction. He put you on the course. He made the course. He put you on the course, and he broadcast to you the directions to get there. Yeah, he can't make you. The destination is assured because he made it. Oh, it's there. You getting there is not assured. Unless you choose. And when you choose, baby, you can take it to the bank. You getting there. Because you are not flying on your own. You're not flying by your sight. You can guarantee you, man. Now you can start resting in predestination. You can start, whoa, glory. Where, where, where are you going today? Glory. They won't know what you're talking about, you know. What do you think about going today? Man, in this life, God prepared for me. Glory to God. Did y'all get anything? Yeah. Hallelujah. Father, we bless you, praise you, and thank you for your rich word. Holy Spirit, thank you. You sold it with understanding. It has been received with understanding, and now, and even right now, is returning to you the full harvest of what it is that pleases you. It is prospering in us right now according to your purpose and your power. In the name of Jesus, I declare, therefore, Satan is off limits to you. Be gone. We rebuke you. Take your hands off that which you attempted to steal. You've been found out now. Now you got to restore. You got to pay uh, restoration, restitution, and well. In Jesus' name. In Jesus, thank you. You have forever ratified God's word, making it true, making it good, in covenant.
by shedding your life, by giving us your life. We cannot pay you back. We don't have the words. We don't have the expression to let you know our gratitude. So we offer our lives back to you. We're the body. You're the head. Use us by all means to glorify yourself because if we're glorified with you, we are glorified in you and you are glorified through us. And we are grateful for calling us into your glory, a life exceeding abundantly above all we could ever ask or imagine according to the power of the Holy Spirit, the tower operating in us. Oh, I has not seen, ear has not heard, but you have revealed to us by your spirit the things that you've prepared for us that we might surely have them and receive everything you have freely given to us. Everyone who's in agreement with this prayer in Jesus' name, say amen.